Hi, I'm Christina Hageny, president of Valor Payroll Solutions, and we help small businesses with their payroll. So a very hot topic right now is overtime because of the new Department of Labor's rules on the salary for exempt employees. So employers should anticipate more employees being eligible for overtime in the near future. So with non-exempt employees, so employees that are not exempt from FLSA's rules regarding overtime, the overtime is one and a half times the regular rate of pay. Now, employers often mistakenly think that they can just take the pay rate, multiply it by 1.5, and multiply that by the overtime hours, and there is your overtime. Now, sometimes that is the case, and that is fine, but there are certain situations where you have to do some additional calculations for the regular rate of pay. The regular rate of pay includes compensation for all services rendered. So if an employee has multiple pay rates, this is one example where the employer will have to calculate an overtime premium rate. The way that you do that is you pay all of the hours, including overtime hours, at the rate of pay. So if an employee has two jobs and they work 20 hours at rate one and 25 hours at rate two, that is a total of 45 hours. So we do have five hours of overtime here in the mix. But to pay this employee, you'll pay 20 hours times the regular rate for that job. You'll pay 25 hours at the regular rate for that job. And then you will take all of the compensation for those 45 hours, divide it by the total hours worked, which is 45 in this case, and that is your regular rate of pay. Now you take that regular rate of pay, you multiply it by 0.5, and you multiply that by the overtime hours to get the overtime premium pay. So in that calculation, you are taking a blended rate to get the regular rate of pay. You reduce it in half because overtime is one and a half times the regular rate of pay, but they have already received one times for all hours worked. So we just need the additional 0.5 times at the overtime premium rate. And then you multiply that by the hours of overtime and there's your overtime premium. In the payroll system, this can look weird. In this example, you would have a total of 50 hours on the check, 20 at rate one, 25 at rate two, and then five at overtime premium. But the payroll system should be able to not count those additional five hours and know that it's just for the purposes of overtime calculation. Another way that employers may have to actually calculate the regular rate of pay is if an employee receives a non-discretionary bonus. So non-discretionary bonus is one where there's a set calculation, it is tied to the employee's work or performance, and it is anticipated by the employee. So if you have a non-discretionary bonus, you have to add that into the total pay before you divide by the number of hours to get that regular rate of pay. So if an employee has an extra $200 you have to multiply the rate of pay times the hours worked plus the non-discretionary bonus, divide that total by the total hours worked. That is your regular rate of pay. And now you can go ahead and calculate that overtime premium. So again, if the employee only has one rate of pay and does not have any non-discretionary bonuses, overtime can be as simple as one and a half times the hourly rate times the number of overtime hours worked. But if an employee has different rates of pay or receives non-discretionary bonuses, you do have to factor everything in and take the total compensation divided by the total hours worked. That is your true regular rate of pay and that is the rate that you use for the overtime premium calculation. Depending on what payroll system you have, this may be easier in some systems than in others. You may have to go outside of the system to manually calculate this and input it. It just depends. 
but at the end of the day, you as the employer are responsible for ensuring that your non-exempt employees are being paid overtime premium at their regular rate of pay, which again is inclusive of all pay that they receive for services rendered. If you have questions about overtime, overtime premium, or how to calculate payroll, please drop them below. We would love to help you out. You can also always find us online at ValorPayrollSolutions.com. Calculating overtime premium can be a little bit confusing. So here is a real life example of how that works. So we're gonna use just one work week to make it simple. So if we have an employee and they work 25 hours and they make $10 an hour, and then maybe they work another 25 hours and they make $12 an hour at that second job, um, they have a total of 50 hours and their gross pay for one times the work. So um, paying everything at the 10 or $12 an hour is $550. The regular rate of pay in this example, we have a pay rate of $10, a pay rate of $12, and 25 hours at each. So the regular rate of pay is $11 an hour, which is right in the middle, which makes sense. It's pretty clear in this example. Then we take the regular rate of pay, $11 an hour, multiply by 0.5 because we've already paid everything at one times their rate of pay and overtime is 1.5. And then we're going to multiply that regular rate of pay times 0.5 times 10 because they have 50 hours, which is 10 overtime hours. So we have 550 times 10 is $55. Now, if the employee also had a non-discretionary bonus during the same period and you factor that in, as you can see, that does change the regular rate of pay, which then also changes the amount of overtime premium that they are going to receive. So again, if an employee works two different pay rates, that is going to trigger an overtime premium calculation with a blended rate because the regular rate of pay is the total compensation for all hours worked, all services rendered. Um, or if they have a non-discretionary bonus, you would also have to factor that in. So if this employee only had one pay rate and they worked 50 hours at $10 an hour, um, you can see our regular rate is $10. There's nothing to factor in here. But if they had a non-discretionary bonus, that is going to add to the gross pay. And again, the regular rate of pay is the total pay divided by the hours. And that is your regular rate of pay. So in this example, you can see the regular rate of pay went from $10 an hour to 14 with that non-discretionary bonus. Now the non-discretionary bonus has to be factored in for the period of which it was earned, which makes it even more complicated. But the important thing here to remember is that it is not as simple as 1.5 times the pay rate if the employee has multiple pay rates, or if they are receiving a non-discretionary bonus, you do have to factor everything in and actually calculate that regular rate of pay before you can actually go and calculate the overtime premium. So hopefully seeing this in real life helps. We'll do one more. So maybe we have 30 hours at $12 an hour and 15 at $15 an hour. Um, so here our regular rate of pay is going to be $13 an hour making 32.50 the overtime premium. Again, those uh, non-discretionary bonuses definitely affect the pay rate. So make sure you are including those in your overtime premium calculation. If you're curious about what these uh, formulas look like here, the gross pay is just going to be hours worked times pay rate plus hours worked times pay rate plus the non-discretionary bonus. That is your gross pay. The regular rate of pay is just going to be the gross pay divided by hours worked. So the sum of A and C and then the overtime premium, kind of a crazy formula here. So in this case, we have if the total hours worked are greater than 40, then we're going to take 0.5 times the regular rate times the total hours worked minus 40 because we're only paying for the overtime hours. If the employee doesn't work over 40 hours in a work week, then you don't have overtime and you don't have an overtime premium calculation, and that would be $0.
Don't be jealous of what I do for a living. It's always fun, but we know this is not the easiest thing for business owners to figure out. Um, you're probably busy doing other things. So if we can help, let us know. That's what we're here for.